And now for Philippians 1, 4 in Greek. So see if you can pronounce uh, that. Now, the, um, as I've alluded to, the pronunciation of Greek in biblical circles is all a mess. Um, I learned a certain Erasmian uh, translation or pronunciation that would say it like this. Pantote en passe de ese mu hu per panton uh, humon. This is a very anglicized and boring uh, pronunciation that drives modern Greek speakers crazy. Uh, modern Greek would be something like, uh, uh, and I apologize ahead of time, pantote en pasi deisi mu hyper panton humon. Actually, the rough breathing marks would not be pronounced in modern modern Greek. Hyper panton imon. Um, there is a a movement. Fred Long at Asbury, of course, has been doing this for years now, uh, to try to pronounce it actually as it was pronounced at the time of the New Testament. Let me try. I'm learning old teaching an old dog new tricks. I think this would be uh, pantote. Uh, put a little flavor into it. Uh, this means always. It's an adverb. You can see that it's pan plus tote all then, but it would be the etymological fallacy to, to think that that necessarily means anything. It's just always. Uh, N is a preposition. It's a little dictator. You will be in the date of case if you come with me. Um, actually, that's not true. Uh, I've maligned many a preposition. But you can see that uh, N does take the dative. So this uh, eta with an iota subscript, I'm still here. Um, uh, and actually the iota here, uh, both of these iotas are indications that it's dative um, and dative singular. Eta tends to be a um, a feminine uh, indicator. Um, so this would be, uh, in, in Koine Greek, it would be something like en passe uh, de esse, uh, sorry, de esse, I think, is the way that would be pronounced in every petition. Um, modern Greek pronounce, pr pronounces eta and epsilon iota as e. Every, everything is e in modern Greek. Pasi uh, de isi. But that that probably wasn't the case at the time of the New Testament. The eta was pronoun probably pronounced e, eh, so it would be eta. Um, it's pronounced today, eta. <laughs> it's very confusing, please. That was the nice thing about learning Greek with Machen back in the uh, the 80s. It was all very simple. And passe de ese, but I've had plenty of Greeks swear at me on YouTube. For not getting it right. Um, but anyway, this, this uh, eta, uh, eta is a uh, indication of feminine. Uh, basically, all the Greeks sat down one day and say, we don't have TV, let's divide up our nouns. And they put them into three baskets. The first declension, the first basket, were mostly feminine words. They tended to have alphas and uh, etas. Um, and then the second basket, basket the second declension were mostly masculines with a large number of neuter words as well. And then the third declension was a grab bag of tricks, everything else. Uh, consonantal declension, so to speak. Weird, weirdos. Um, but so this eta is a first declension a dative, and then with the subscript, I'm still here, a dative singular uh, that goes with N taking the dative. Um, you might translate this actually with every petition. Uh, by the way, the verse before said, uh, I thank God as I constantly make mention of you in my prayers, or something like that, um, beginning of the Thanksgiving section. And then he continues, always uh, in every petition of me on behalf of you, uh, with joy, making the petition. But anyway, so passe is a first declension uh, adjective. Actually, it's related to pan, means all, all or every. So then we have... Um, in biblical, uh, in New Testament times, it would be pr probably pronounced something like, uh, sorry, the, the, the e c, the e c. That doesn't sound at all like the a c, does it? Um, but uh, the e c, e c. So delta at the time of the New Testament was pronounced the, I guess, uh, eta uh, instead of eta, e, and then epsilon iota e, apparently. Had already this had already gone to e by the time of the New Testament. So, the esse. Um, 
petition. This is a third declension noun. It's a sissy noun. De, uh, de es, the esis. The esis. The esis. It's a sis at the end. Or cease. Um, and so this is the dative form of a, of a sissy noun. Um, and it is feminine. Um, anyway, so always in every petition of me, mer, uh, omicron, upsilon, uh, is a genitive singular, uh, any kind of pronoun. Um, uh, so anyway, of me. Of course, that's bad English, so we would say always in my petition. We don't say in every petition of me. That's just not good English. On behalf of you all, another prepositional phrase. So this is a prepositional phrase, and then this is a prepositional phrase, except it uses, uh, uh, now, I think this would be u, u pair, um, more of a u uh, than, than the who pair, the boring who pair. I'm saying who pair here in Erasmian Greek. Uh, anyway, uh, who pair, um, who pair, uh, the accents on the second syllable. Um, on behalf of, this preposition can take uh, nouns in two cases, uh, genitive and accusative. Uh, the omega here is a genitive plural, on behalf of all y'all, and it is a y'all, it's a plural. Um, panton uh, humon. Okay, so, uh, okay, on behalf of y'all, all y'all. Uh, this is where we get hyper from. Um, it can mean above. I think I think it means above with the accusative, as I recall. All right. So, uh, meta, uh, haras, uh, ten de essen de essen, uh, poiumenos. Okay, I'm going to go with the old. The the Erasmian would be meta haras, ten de essen de essen, poiumenos. Okay. Meta karas is another uh, prepositional phrase. Meta with the genitive means uh, with, so it's with joy. Uh, kara, that's also genitive singular. Uh, I prefer the eta sigma genitive singular uh, because then you can tell for sure it's genitive. But with um, nouns whose stem ends in a row, uh, it doesn't do the aedas. Again, these are the obscure little rules that are not really that important to life. You could translate it without knowing it. So the reason why that's an alpha uh, instead of an eta uh, is because of the rho at the end of the stem. Um, yeah. So with joy, the petition making, making the petition. So this is accusative singular feminine. Uh, there's the ten or tain if you go with uh, the way I learned it or Teen, if you go with modern Greek. <laughs> All right, it's confusing. Maybe I should just go with Erasmian and, and give up on it. Um, tell me in the comments. But um, this is accusative feminine singular. This is a accusative feminine singular. Both of them have a new. The new is your, your hint that this is accusative. This again, though, is a third declension sissy noun, so it doesn't behave very nicely. Um, but it's, it's the object of poiumenos. And poiumenos is um, from poieo, which is a contract verb. There's been a crash here. Uh, the u here is, ooh, it's a crash. The epsilon of poieo has crashed into an omicron of ominos, or ominos, however you want to say it. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, men are passive participles, believe it or not. Men are passive. Um, the men there tells you that this is a passive participle. Uh, Omicron Sigma tells you that it's a nominative masculine singular. Um, so this is a nominative masculine singular present active participle from poieto. And we just translate it like a participle, making. Uh, it's masculine singular because Paul is the one doing it. He's the subject way back when. Um, so uh, it matches him in his gender and number. Uh, and he's making the petition. Wow, this has not been fun, has it? No wonder people like my Hebrew videos. I'm messing you up with pronunciation. Uh, let me try once again to tra to pronounce it as I understand or am, am learning the, the uh, koine uh, pronunciation. So this would be pantote en uh, passe de e si mu huper panton 
uh, humon, I'm sorry, this would be the SC, uh, mata karas, ten the essin, or the essin, poi umenos. Always in every petition of me, on behalf of y'all, uh, with joy making the petition. That was painful. Give me advice in your comments on what you want me to do with this.